Bionic Dance is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Did God create evil? Well, Judeo-Christian theology teaches that God made all things. Now many people conclude then that if God made everything, then God made evil. That's not exactly an illogical conclusion. If you built everything, then even the objectionable stuff is your doing. But how often have theists displayed a willingness to engage in rational thought when it comes to their religion? Let's do this. <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. The concept of good versus evil has been a part of humanity for a very long time, from philosophy to fiction, yet which constitutes which, and the source of either one, has long been in dispute, probably for as long as thought existed. That said, for the purposes of this discussion, we are going to assume that a god exists and that it's the Abrahamic god. Without using that as a hypothetical jumping off point, I'll be forced to spend the entire video clarifying which god and explaining that no, I really don't believe in such a creature. I feel this disclaimer is necessary in order to have an efficient conversation. The topic then, is God evil? If God made evil, then that would make God evil. But that thinking is based on a mistaken premise. That is, it presumes that evil is a thing. Well, we do have a word for it. And unlike words that start with prefixes like non, a, or an, it hasn't negated anything. The word doesn't say that something isn't the case, meaning it's almost certainly a thing unto itself. But of course, language can be sticky. So let's hear him out. Evil is something, but it's not a thing. It's, it's not stuff. It's not made up of atoms. It's not made up of molecules. It's not made up of matter, right? It's not some cosmic goo that, that contaminates things. It's not the lint that gets caught in your belly button. Uh, you can't buy it at a store. You can't put it in your pocket. You can't flick it at a friend, all right? If he's trying to say that evil is intangible, I suppose he's mostly right. But if evil, or good for that matter, do exist as thought or deed, then the source of both, the source of thought being the brain, and the deed being the actions of the body, are most certainly empirical, tangible. So where he started out essentially correct, the truth is that, when examined more thoroughly, if evil or good exists, they definitely have a corporeal presence in the universe. Now, as I said, although evil is not a thing, it is something. And here's what I mean by that. Evil is a privation of good. It is the absence of good. And here is where he really starts to go off the rails. If evil is merely the absence of good, then neutrality cannot exist. A minor indiscretion cannot exist. This kind of black or white thinking, this either or, means that there cannot be any nuance to our interactions with others. There cannot be levels of offense given. And one person's evil cannot be another person's no big deal or even their own good. And yet, we see examples of such all through our world. Probably the three most notable examples these days involve, what else? Sex. Whether it's homosexuality, birth control, or the motivation for performing the act itself, there is definitely such a division. How do we determine which side is right? How do we determine which side is evil, if any is? The only reasonable metric is whether harm has been done, and whether the participants, willing or unwilling, found it objectionable. But if the way we measure good and evil is harm, then clearly evil is not merely the absence of good. Okay, so let me offer an illustration. Uh, what is a donut hole? You might be thinking those are those, you know, warm, sugary, uh, you know, soft things that we eat. And they're super good. But that's not what I'm referring to. A donut hole is simply the place where there is no donut. Okay, it's not a happy place. I don't want to be there. And now the rails are disappearing over the horizon. Let's remember that the donut was made by somebody. It was designed by somebody. Is this guy a creationist? By looking at his organization's website, it would seem so. They claim to be Bible literalists. That means that if there are gaps in the goodness of our universe, then God the donut maker intended such. By his own analogy and by his own definitions, God made evil. Or how about this? What is a shadow? Well, it's the place where there is no light. Or what is coldness? Well, it's the place where there is no heat. Notice each of these things is defined not by what they are, but by what they are not. And yet, unlike the donut hole analogy, light and heat have levels, and in extremes, both can be quite harmful. In fact, light can be harmful even if it's just a certain type. 
For that matter, many denizens of the Earth do not react the same as others to either light or heat. There are creatures that will die when exposed to more light or more heat than mammals, just as mammals can only withstand a certain range of cold or heat. Whether he intended or not, his light and heat comparisons are much better analogies for good and evil than a donut. Just as one creature's perfect environment is another's utter destruction, so too is one person's horrid sin another person's wonderful day. And it's all down to harm, how much and to whom it's been done. And philosopher William Dembski puts it this way. He says, evil always parasitizes the good. Indeed, all our words for evil presuppose a good that has been perverted. Impurity presupposes purity. Unrighteousness presupposes righteousness. Deviation presupposes a way from which we've departed. Sin, the Greek word hamartia, presupposes a target that was missed and so on. The problem with this is presupposition and expecting that your paradigm, your worldview, be followed by everybody else. And again, defining evil as the absence of good is simply nonsense. Evil must be harmed unintentionally. Otherwise, even an accident, an accident not caused by a creature like an earthquake or a flood, could be considered evil. But what do we really think of when we talk about evil? We don't usually think about accidents or even people who are being rude or aggressive. No, no. We think of villains, dictators, rapists, thieves, vandals, con artists, and so on. Not merely the absence of good, but intentional harm. So therefore, evil is not a thing, and therefore God can't be responsible for creating it. But if nothing existed before God created the universe, then leaving empty bits that we can get to, pockets of evil that were unfilled with stuff, that's a design flaw on God's part, isn't it? And again, evil is more than just an absence of something. Look at this King James Bible page. Every definition includes words like mischief, wicked, corrupt, wrong, describes evil as causing pain, distress, loss, calamity. None of the above describe a mere absence of good. And remember how there was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Who built that? In Genesis 2.9, God did. He didn't have to, but he did, and it led to pain, distress, and calamity throughout the history of humankind, if the Bible is to be believed. That was a bit of mischief on his own part, wouldn't you say? I was able to find a Bible study site that attempted, badly I think, but at least they tried, to separate, to categorize different kinds of evil. I certainly approve of the idea behind doing so. I find it necessary to categorize atheism by the source of or reason for unbelief, and to modify atheism with an adjective or a prefix. It helps to clarify conversations, since a lot of people will hear the word and make unwarranted assumptions about the sort of atheist a person might be, that there can only be one sort. I applaud them for their intentions, even if I think they bollocks it a bit. Point being that they, as I, recognize that evil isn't merely the absence of something, but, in fact, the doing of something unpleasant. Even if we don't agree on what those somethings are, we can at least have a reasonable conversation about it. Also, I should point out something. Evil is a thing, and that thing is called William Shatner. It must be destroyed before it can destroy us. You have been warned. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon. Well, whoever that is, she's got to get by us. Go get her, Sandra! Schmoozer the Schmoozerian? Good evening. As a duly designated representative of the YouTube channel Bionic Dance, I order you to cease any and all trolling activity and return forthwith to your website of origin or to the nearest convenient internet site. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, Sandra. Do you believe in God? No? Then... Subscribe!
Sandra, when someone asks you if you believe in God, you say, wait, actually you got that right. Never mind.